Okay, guys, Schlage Everest. I know this has been gone over many times before in other videos, and, and you, know, you guys have, have experimented with picking them and all that. But I want to go over what to do if you're a locksmith and you get called to, get to do a job. In this case, it was making a key or fixing a push bar on a, a building where they wanted the alarm to work. Come to find out that it had an Everest cylinder in there. So on site, I had another keyed cylinder ready to go, so I swapped it. But when you get on site, if you don't have that luxury, if you don't have an extra cylinder, you're gonna need to make keys for this once you extract the mortise cylinder. And it was a DTEX alarm unit, so this is the dogging key on the inside. The only real reason for a, a better cylinder like this would be key control so that they can't go to a hardware store and get them made. But in this case, say you're on site and you get there and you're like, okay, quick job, all I gotta do is make keys for this. And then all of a sudden you realize that without the existing key, the, ignore this, that's what we're getting to, but this is the machining hole for the LFIC uh, little doodad on the inside that pulls back when you turn the key. So you may be thinking, well, I can just unscrew this mortise cylinder and get to it from there, maybe, and take it apart. Um, nope, there's nothing that can be done through that. And you have your check pin, you're sitting here going, oh, great. So I guess the only way to do this is to pick the lock. So, you have a Schlage Everest for one thing, and while you may sit here and get lucky and pick it immediately, sometimes you don't, so you're going to try that for a little bit. However, you can pick the lock all day long, but you still have to activate that seventh position to retract the lug to pull this core out. So even if you pick it, you have to pick it to control. You can very, very carefully pick it and reach back there and hit that control pin and get it out, but it's very, very touchy doing that. So here's the easiest way to do this while you're in the field. So you already have this hole, and this hole is, um, somebody on Twitter, rubber band on Twitter, pointed out this is the hole that they used to go in and cut the hole on the other side to uh, form the pocket for that little doodad in there. Well, at first I was like, well, let me cut this key down, uh, control key down, and leave the tip of it, and I can just use it as a turning wrench. However, which will retract the uh, check pin. Now, I know there's tension tools that you can use to retract that check pin. I don't happen to have one. Um, this may or may not work. You have to cut it real low. It's pretty solid still here, but you do have to be careful with it. And presumably I was going to use this for a turning tension tool and pick the lock with it. Um, I tried again for a little while, didn't work. I just, you know, locksmiths who don't pick locks all the time may or may not be great at picking locks. So anyway, the fastest way to do this is to reference this line, take a Sharpie, and right in the middle, and you can see I've already done this. So circle all the way around to the other side. You can go all the way to the other side, doesn't matter. Oh, I jumped a, jumped a track there. And then take a little tape measure or solid flat surface and use it to visually index directly across the back of the cylinder. And you kind of just have to eyeball where you're going to go. I mean, I put it right in the center, so... I draw a line across and then intersect that line to I was off I was off when I did that let's see hold it there and intersect it this way to this line which will give you pretty much the approximate position to drill your hole Take a 16th inch drill bit. You don't want it any bigger than this. You want the smallest drill bit possible because you have to use this cylinder afterward. You can hand drill this. Doesn't take much to get through. Once you break through that thin layer, you can actually feel 
the cylinder or the spring loaded part. So again, you gotta be very careful, like drill just a bit, come out, drill a little bit more, come out, clean it. Clean it. And then once you break through, which it won't, it's not very deep, it's just 16th of an inch itself. And you can feel that. Now, don't use your drill bit for that because you want to use it for the next job. They get you a dental probe. And you're thinking, okay, great. Now I have a way to, to push that pin and then get it out. Well, that's not going to work either because the key, the, the, it has to be turned. So, or that, the back pin, which I'll show you in a minute, has to be actuated. So, take your control key. Now, let's talk about control keys. There's S123 is the most common, or C123. S is the newest style and is backwards compatible. So, S works for C, but C won't work for S. They're the exact same, except they're undercut a little bit differently here, which will allow them to work in both backwards old cylinders so if you're gonna stock a key if you don't run across these if you're a locksmith in an area that never sees this type of stuff it's still going to be prepared because if there's any construction in your area invariably this might pop up on your radar so if you never see it and you need to stock uh, a key go with the s one two three and so get you a couple of you know five control keys and however many keys you think you need for your area and the regular key. The control key simply is like a seven pin key and it just has the extra notch on the end which we'll show you in a second. So um, I've already got these cut so we're gonna progress with this. So how do you get the cylinder out? So you take your control key, S or in this case, I think this is a C cylinder because the C and the S work in it. If it was an S cylinder, the C wouldn't work in it. So we're gonna take our control key and we're gonna just slip it into the back, a blank key. And what that does is it's going to allow you to go through your hole. This is kind of hard to do one-handed. So you're gonna take your probe and you're gonna jiggle it until, and you may have to jiggle your key a little bit too. Again, one-handed is the problem here. Or this is easier done. Okay, so I just pushed it in further. I'm kind of pushing in on the key, and then I'm pushing in here. Oh, the tip of my, the tip of this one is curved. It's not hitting. may have to move to a vise to do this. It, it, it would be much easier with a vise, I will, I will add. So we may go over there in a minute and do that. Problem is, is you normally pull it out because the teeth of the key are uh, holding in the pin, so it allows you to just pull the key out. When you have a blank key, obviously, there's nothing there to to, to let you do that. Do I have the, yeah, I've got a control key. You gotta kinda rock it up and down sometimes to get that pen to push all the way in. See if we can make the drill bit work. Oh, my key came out. So it's not it's not gonna work if the key's out. Methodically, I'm gonna take my hand, rock the key up and down until I feel that pin really push in. There we go. I'm pushing back here with my thumb and pushing in here and it finally enabled it to push in far enough to pull that out. Now, we just lost a part. We just lost that retainer, which we need. 
So in the lock, we got it out. We're gonna see what we just did there. So you just push the key in. It still sometimes won't go all the way in. So that's why you kinda gotta rock that key sometimes to make it engage. And if you rock it just right, so you're still not in, but if we rock the key up and down, the blank key up and down a bit, making sure it's fully engaged here. Let's do this on the counter. There, just went in. You just, it, it, it's very ticky with a blank key. So now to rekey it, which is a standard rekey. So we've got it out, which is the main part. I'm gonna unscrew the tail or cap here. I'm gonna drop this as a standard slug pin. It's actually not standard, it's a lot bigger. So you can't use a regular slug pin style. Now shimming it, we see this mechanism here won't come out. You can shim this lock with all this intact. In fact, you almost never have to remove any of this. So we're gonna go back to our blank key a blank control key and when you stick the control key in here if you watch that very that pin right here you'll you'll see it raise up pushing it in and here comes that that control pin and it pushes it up so that's what allows it to turn so you cannot start doing it you have to back you have to back it out because your shim is not going to get past that seventh pin. So we're going to grab our shim, and everybody should know how to shim a lock, but we'll do it anyway. So I just pulled it out. Nope, I just pulled it out enough. Let's do that back in camera. Pull it out. It's pushed up right now. I'm going to start to back the key out with my other hand, and now we're past the control pin. And at that point, you can just simply continue your shimming. To get to the rest. Oh, and we skipped something there. I'm gonna... Shimming can be an exercise in patience all in itself, especially on these tighter, tighter tolerance locks, especially, especially if they are weathered tighter tolerance locks. Some people can, some people prefer to do this with a pick by coming around, using your pick to lift up pins, which you do have to do sometimes. A little bit more awkward than just using a key blank. So unless I'm having major problems with the key blank shimming style. All right, so now what's holding us in is while we're shimming, we've got this check pin issue. So I'm going to take that. Once I get back to these one and two pins, I'm going to go ahead and push that check pin in and see it allowed the core to turn. Um, and I did not show you a way to, to, to get past that issue, but I will in a second. Uh, I did not bring a plug follower either, it looks like. I'm going to go grab a plug follower. Plug follower. Okay. So, like I said, if you do this carefully, you never have to worry about this because this is uh, like five little pieces that if you're in a hurry and you don't want to mess with it, if you just carefully remove this, this will stay. It will only, now remember your check pin, remember the check pin is in here and it's going to freely fall out. So basically all that check, check pin is, is a spring and the driver. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get this seventh pin in a protective spot. You want to dump it out because that is not an easy, easily replaceable thing. 
I'm going to put the spring back in this check pin. And flip the core over. Okay, I had somebody interrupt me. So I had put the spring back in the check pin. Dang, phone calls interrupting my phone. I actually had it on silent again because I've been taking pictures. So this is a little bit easier to do when you don't have the actual operating pins in the lock because you don't have to hold them in with your other hand here. So anyway, drop your spring down into the check pin area and let your check pin drop in. The point is going in and then make sure by kind of bouncing it that it is engaging that spring down in there and not caught incorrectly. So then we go ahead and we're going to rekey the cylinder to your new key, which you hopefully have prepared and drop your control key pin back in the back, which one side is kind of notched and the other side has the pin point that you would presumably would go down just like a regular pin. And if the only reason you should have to worry about the back lug area here is if you have to take or remove master pins so if your plug follower has to go past here you want to very carefully holding it up and take that ring off and there is a very tiny pin in there now this should not come out control lug should not come out oh my goodness the phone again Bam collars this morning. So if this pin does come out, it's a one side's fatter, one side skinnier. The skinnier side goes in like that. That fat side intersects with the hole in the lug and hold it with your follower. So once you get it pinned up, get your check pin in there which the check pin will stay in there if you have a key in there. It only not come out if the key is not in there. And your seventh pin, control pin. We're gonna run it through with the regular key. Check it. Gonna check your control key, which is the same as this key. It's your top level. If you have a master keyed system, it's gonna be your top level master key. If you just have this one key, then it's just a copy of that key on the control blank. And as everybody knows how to do, we're gonna put all the cap and retainer back on. Now, the phone is ringing and it's gonna mess up this report. Okay, let's get this done before that phone rings again. I gotta go, I gotta go pull the phones back. I'm gonna transfer them to cell. I haven't done that this morning. So put our cap back on going to put this actuator into it, which is kind of like a padlock, kind of like a, an American padlock actuator. Put this copper ring on, up, and grab your control key to retract it, and holding it up like that so everything stays where it's supposed to. Oh, everything didn't stay where it was supposed to. <laughs> Try that again, put this on, hold it vertically, and in, turn your control key, pull your control key out, and check your regular key. Um, and I did mention, uh, trying to do this pretty quick, put your cam back on, which actually that cam screws into the actuator. I only took this off to be able to push from the back. Push when I was trying to get it apart from the housing. And my last little tip was take a 
piece of tape, and I, I thought about doing this when I was picking the lock. But if you're having trouble shimming the lock because of that actuator and you don't have three hands or a vise to help you, if you see, you take a bottom pin from a, uh, like a 150, the shortest bottom pin will allow you to push that down and tape it up. So what that's doing is that's putting your pressure on that check pin so that if you're having trouble shimming it or whatever, it will help hold that pin down. All right, so uh, if you have any questions or comments, everybody has their own way of doing everything. This does no damage. There's a tiny hole there. It's fine. There's nothing, nothing wrong with doing that because that hole's, you know, hidden behind something. And uh, it's just a quicker way to do it. Well, you could pick the lock. You just never know if that picking that lock is going to take you 20, 30 minutes. Doing this, if you already have your keys prepped ready to go, will take no more than like five minutes to do. So it's a sure way to go ahead and knock it out and get on to your next job. So anyway, thanks for watching. If y'all have any questions or additional ideas, feel free to leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy.